Covenant Church. All right, Ashes. It's time for second service. Let let's get the visitors in. Those that are visiting in the in the hallways, uh, get them in. And let's get it to let's get ready to to rumble. <laughs> All right, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Uh, you are in for a, uh, a wonderful way this morning because I know I have been there already. I have seen the promised land. <laughs> so let's go ahead and just say a prayer this morning. Father, you are in this place. Oh God, we worship. You are in this place, God, because you said you inhabit in the praises of your people. And you said in your word, when two or three are gathered in your name, you are there. Most importantly, God, you have chosen this house to be a place where you inhabit, oh God. This is the place where the Holy Spirit, oh God, has made a dwelling, oh God. Father, we know and we understand, oh God, that when you are in a place, oh God, things change and things move, oh God. This morning, oh Father, yeah, we just want to say move, Holy Spirit. Move in your power, move in your way, oh God. Only, only do what only you, Holy Spirit, can do this morning our hearts are ready we are ready we are expecting Holy Spirit we want to birth a new thing in our life we know you are doing something new 
in our church. We know you are doing something new in our city. We yes. know you are doing something new in our country, Lord. Father, this morning, as we worship you, oh, oh open our hearts to receive. Holy Spirit, move in your might and move in your way. Do only what you, Holy Spirit, can do this morning. We yield to your power and your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. The Bible Amen. says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Would you stand this morning? I got a story to good to hide. I was a blind man wandering until I saw the light. Yeah, I got a story I can't deny. I'm a living, breathing miracle and I got to testify. Ain't nobody love me like Jesus. Ain't nobody love me this good. Ain't nobody love me like Jesus. I know, I know, nobody could. Tell me who could give me this freedom. Tell me who could get me this far. Ain't nobody love me like Jesus. I know, I know, nobody could. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody. Now I'm anointed. To bring the news Everything he did for me I know I'll do for you He gave me joy in the morning For the ashes of crown I'm a walking, talking miracle I just gotta let it out hey. Ain't nobody love me like Jesus Ain't nobody love me this good Ain't nobody love me like Jesus I know, I know, nobody could Tell me you could give me this freedom Tell me you could get me this far Ain't nobody love me like Jesus I know, I know, nobody could Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody Nobody could pull me from the darkness, save me by the blood, raise me from the ashes. I know, I know, nobody could break off every shackle, tear down every wall, set free every captive. I know, I know, nobody could. Save me by the blood Raise me from the ashes I know, I know Nobody could break off every shackle Tear down every wall Set free every captive I know, I know Nobody could Ain't nobody love me like Jesus. Ain't nobody love me this good. Ain't nobody love me like Jesus. I know, I know, nobody could. Tell me you could give me this freedom. Tell me you could get me this far. Ain't nobody love me like Jesus. And I know, I know, nobody could. Ain't nobody. Nobody love me like Jesus. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody love me like Jesus. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody. Come on, let's just shout a praise unto the Lord for He is good. Woo! Hallelujah! It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Welcome to Second Service. I'm so glad y'all are here. Um, we're going to put three minutes on the clock, and I want to challenge you to make a new friend, stay connected, build community, and then we'll come right back for more worship.
Amen, amen, amen. Covenant Church, come on, make some noise on a Sunday morning. If you're happy to be in church, come on. Now, y'all know I see some different jerseys and teams out here. Y'all know you're going to be making noise later in the day. So if you're excited to be in church and you're on God's team this morning, make some noise, Covenant Church. Come on, come on. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome to Get in the Game Sunday. We're going to share a little bit more about what that is about later on in the service. But I'm excited. I know I'm the crazy one wearing a Cowboys polo right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I didn't share this with first service because I didn't think they were spiritual enough to handle it, but I think you guys are. Just a little joke, just a quick little joke. Do you know why there's a big opening in the Dallas Cowboys Stadium? Because God's a Dallas Cowboys fan. <laughs> Amen, amen. Oh, whew. Now I'm going to talk about tithes and offering. That just seems. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. It's Sunday morning. I am so excited to be in church. I'm glad we have a church that likes to talk to each other and spend time and get to know each other. And before we continue our worship and our praise with our song and our voices, we'll continue our worship with our offering as the ushers come forward. I talk too fast and I get out of breath. Amen, amen, amen. Bring the Dallas Cowboys joke all day long. I've heard them all. Amen, amen. I am excited. You know, I was telling first service, I was telling first service, talking a little bit about tithes and offering and, and you know, what it, the mindset I had uh, and how it changed at one point. But to me, somebody spoke a word that I listened to one time and talked about tithes and offering. And my wife and I have given tithes and offering for quite a while. But when it really broke down to first fruits, that I gave God the first thing. Because tithes and offering were at first a convenience thing. Like, okay, I know that I made this money and I know that I'm gonna give God this much, but I've gotta pay my bills first. And, um, you know, the kids need new shoes or we got to make sure we make the car payment. Uh, we got to make sure that we pay rent. We got to make sure we do this. And then all of a sudden, oh, it's like I'm, I'm just a couple dollars short of doing what I need to do. But I have this money set aside over here, but I haven't given it yet. And we do the same thing with our time, right? I'm going to give my first fruits, my tithe on Sunday morning to Jesus. The first thing I can do on the first day of the week is to be in church and give my time and talent to God, right? But sometimes we run out of energy. And, you know, I know I was going to serve in church. I know I was going to go to church on Sunday. I know I was going to go to church, but man, I've been so busy all week and the kids have been going crazy and there's been sports and there's been school and there's been work and there's, and I'm just kind of, I kind of out, I'm out of, I'm out of patience. I'm out of time. I'm going to just go next week. Amen. But God wants our first fruits. And when we decide that we're going to give him our first fruits, that's why I love our text to give, right? I can give to God as soon as that paycheck gets deposited into my account. That's the first thing I do is go on my phone and text God and say, this is for you because he can do so much more. And it's covenant church. It became when it became more to me about a spiritual gift that I was, I had received from God and I was just giving back the portion that he requested back. And it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the the amount, right? It doesn't matter what the decimal point is, how many digits are in front or behind it. It's about the heart that says, I'm going to give you what you've asked me as my first fruit. The first thing that I'm going to do, the first time of the day, the first 15 minutes of the day, the first part of my paycheck, I am giving to you, God. So as we tithe this morning, Lord, we honor you, Lord. We thank you for what you have already given us, Lord. You have already blessed us with 100%, Lord. And as we give to you, Lord, our first fruits, Lord, the first thing that we can do, Lord, we give to you. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord. We thank you for the time today, Lord. We thank you for this. We thank you for this church that you have given us, Lord, but we also thank you that we don't have to keep you in this box, Lord, that we can take you outside of this place when we leave here, Lord. And we thank you that you have blessed us, that we may bless you more, and that we may be a small part of something so much grander and greater that you are doing, Father God. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
worship team is getting itchy. I can feel it. They want to sing. They want to praise God. Y'all ready to praise God? Y'all ready to praise God in church on Sunday morning? Come on, let's stand to our feet. If you're able to, we love you. We love to just, this is the time for you. Remember, there, when we lift our hands, we're just reaching up. I've got a little grandchild, and she reaches up, and she's like, that's, that's her sign of, I'm just giving it up to you. I'm just, I want you to take over. I want you to hold me and carry me and, and carry me through whatever I'm going through. As we lift our hands to you, God, this morning, you carry us through, Lord. We lift our arms to you like your children, Lord, that you may hold us, Lord, that you may draw us near, Lord, that we may lift our voices to you, Lord, and praise you in this place, Lord, with no shame, with no judgment, Lord, just a joyful noise that we make to you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If the Lord builds the house, nobody can stand against it. I built up my own name, but the walls couldn't stand. I've trusted my own strength, but it was sinking sand. So I put my ruins into your hands And watch you restore them like only you can If the Lord builds the house, nobody can tear it down If the Lord builds the house, nobody can tear it down If the Lord builds the house, nobody can tear it down. The bricks may be weathered through storm and through fire, but what God holds together, it stands firm every time. Cause my life is anchored on this solid. That whatever God's building, no, it won't be moved. Cause if the Lord builds the house, nobody can tear it down. If the Lord builds the house, nobody can tear it down. When it's built on His name, there's nothing gonna shake this ground. Tear it down. Come on, declare. As for me and my house, we're gonna serve you, Lord. So here's the keys. Come on in. Everything we have is yours. As for me and my house, we're gonna serve you, Lord. So here's the keys. Won't you come on in? Everything we have is yours. Here's the keys. Come on in. Everything we have is yours. The Lord builds the house. Nobody can tear it down. Nobody. If the Lord builds the house, nobody can tear it down. When it's built on His name, there's nothing gonna shake this ground. Christ in me, for I've been born again. My heart is free. 
the hope of heaven before me, the grave behind. Hallelujah, you brought me back to life. Hallelujah, I won't forget. I won't forget the moment I heard you call my name out of the grip of darkness into the light of grace just like lives arise oh you brought me back to life where there was dead religion now there is living faith all of my hope and freedom are found in jesus name just like lazarus oh you brought me back to life no longer no longer i who live but christ in me for i've been born again my heart is free the hope of heaven before me the grave behind hallelujah you brought me back to life when something says i'm guilty i'll point to the price you paid when something says i'm not worthy i'll point to that empty grave just like lazarus oh you brought me back to life no longer i who live but christ in me for i've been born again my heart is free the hope of heaven before me the grave behind hallelujah you brought me back to life lift your voice and sing this with me how can i how can i begin to thank you for all that you've done for me jesus to fully praise you it will take all eternity just like lazarus oh you brought me back to life you brought me back to life you brought me back to life oh you brought me back to life no longer it's no longer i who but cry Christ in me, for I've been born. My heart, my heart, my heart is free. The hope of heaven before me, the grave behind. Hallelujah, you brought me back. It's no longer I, no longer I, but Christ in me. Christ in me, for I. a shout of praise for he is good you brought me back to life God we thank you for life made new again we thank you for new beginnings we place this brand new week in your hands oh God and we place you first above all else may you reign in our hearts and reign in this place and reign in this city oh God we thank you for renewing our minds and refreshing our spirit in your holy presence in Jesus' name we pray, and the church says, amen. amen and amen. God bless you, Covenant Church. I'm off.
Um, while they're fixing that technical difficulty. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to the sound booth. Yeah. Woo -woo! Are we on? We have a new um, service okay. producer is an actual title in the church. And the service producer produces you, everything son. in the booth, the camera, the lights, the pro presenter, which means the screen, and the sound. And that is Steve Portugal. He is needing help in his, to build his team. To, and so if you, uh, you want to get plugged in and participate with him on his team, he, we need more help in the booth. And so um, get, today's all about getting the game. So don't be scared. I know he's got big muscles, but he's a teddy bear. Don't be scared of him. Just go right up and say, I'll be on your team. Um, we, could, we need to build up the team. We have three services on Sunday. And so anything you can do could help if you have a gifting for that area and you like technology or whatever. Cool? All right. Amen. Amen. Sorry. Thank That's you. That's good. You're good. <laughs> oh, today is get in the game. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Here, Keith and Heather, this is for you. That's for Keith and Heather, yeah. Um, today's getting the game. And we need you. Right? They're not in trouble. That's a, that's a, that's a good note to them. You ready? Who's ready to get in the game? Ready? Come on. Come on. Let's get in the game. We got lots of places for you to serve. Let's go. Mate, you better look at that ball. It might, might have something on it that you have to do. Serve. Serve. Here we go. Come on. Get ready. They're coming. We need you in outreach admissions. We need you in member services. We need you in guest services. We need you in... Audio and media, we need you on the greeting team. We need you in the food bank. You ready? You ready to serve? Come on, they're coming. Woo! Oops. <laughs> bad throw, Cindy. Bad throw, bad throw. Here goes. Whoa, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> So, did you get one? Oh, good. Did you catch one? Oh, good. Yay. All righty. Well, you know, 2023, the kingdom of God needs you. And... Um, all of January, Pastor Joe and the, um, Pastor Dion, the ones that have been speaking, they've talked briefly or given a message on vision or trust and faith. And, and when you get, when God downloads a vision into your spirit, you better be ready for battle, right? Because when you have vision, there's going to be tests and trials. You're going to have fear. You're going to have doubts. Like, God, is this really you? And... Um, but the word truly speaks over and over again that if there's no vision, there's no hope. And without vision, people perish because they don't know where they're going. They don't have a purpose or a plan in life. And I'll tell you, a man without a purpose or a woman without purpose is a dangerous thing. Very dangerous because without a purpose and without direction, they end up all over the place. And so we see in the Old Testament, by the way, all those tables out there and the candy go all the way down to the east side too because there's tables going all the way down. Make sure you, on both, all the exits, visit each table, see where you fit, where you belong. Um, all through the Old Testament, um, God spoke in dreams and in visions. And... You can see him, how he revealed himself to Jacob um, on the ladder, ascending. He saw angels ascending and descending. Um, he revealed himself to Samuel, a little boy. And Samuel said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So he was never 
Um, it was never about age or gender. He wanted to reveal himself to man because he wanted you to be able to see what he could do in you and through you. And so we see that he even gave Pharaoh a dream, and Pharaoh dreamed that there were going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. He did that so that they could prepare their nation so that they wouldn't starve to death. Um, I believe we're in a day and time right now where God is wanting to share himself and show and reveal himself to you and I in such a way that will change our community and it will change our city. And what I mean by that is we are living in a time where people don't know if up is up and down is down and left is right and right is left and their truth is their truth. What, what is that? The truth is flowing like a river. No, it's not. The truth is more like a solid rock on which we stand, Christ Jesus. That is the truth. It doesn't ebb and flow with our every whims and what we want or what we think is right. The truth is the word of God. Amen? Amen. And so I, I see him as he um, reveals himself in the Old Testament. And sometimes I, I'm not just sometimes, but more often than not, we get distracted by the voices that we're listening to that are not his and by things that we see, life distractions, whether it's finances, health, relationships, whatever it may be. And we are often distracted by those things. And so we, um, because our, our head is cluttered with all this chaos and noise, we are not hearing the voice of God, and we're not seeing through the eyes of the Spirit what He wants us to see. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it tells of the life of Christ in the Gospels. And um, we see God come in flesh as Jesus Christ and walk and talk with man. He was sharing the present with them, but he was also sharing the future of what he could see, their future, our future. John 14, 11 through 13 says, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these. I want to pause right there because if we're supposed to be doing greater works than that, than he did, hmm. Whoever believes in me, do we have any believers in the house? Do we have any believers in the house? There we go. Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these. Well, because I am going to the Father. Number one, he talked the talk and walked the walk that he wanted them and he wanted us to emulate. So why is it so hard for us to believe that he can use you and I to pray for the sick and they will recover. Yes. I'm living proof that that works. Healing. If he saved you, he can save many more. He saved me, he can save many more. Right? But we often allow doubt, life, mistakes, failure, fear, get in the way of what God can do in us and through us. And I... I know it's, this is why. Because we're praying like the answer depends on me. And the answer is not dependent on me. The answer is dependent on him. So I've got to move myself out of the way, my ego out of the way, my human nature like, oh, if I pray for them and God doesn't answer them, how's that going to make me look? We leave our ego at the door when it comes to serving Christ. You got to leave it at the door. They have that saying at CrossFit, leave your ego out here, right? Same way spiritually. Leave your ego out there because it doesn't fit well in the kingdom of God. It doesn't fit well with God working in you and through you because God wants the glory. And so when we go to do the works of the Father, we got to know that it is the Father that's doing them. We are just the conduit. 
I was talking to Donnie the other day, and we were talking about trusting the Lord for our very provision. And I said, God, we can't ever forget that God is our source. He may use a different conduit to get it to you, but the conduit doesn't really matter as long as we keep our eyes on him. He's the source. He's the source of our healing. He's the source of our salvation. He's the source of our provision. He is all of that and more. Yeah. And verse 13 says, And I will do whatever you ask in my name. Maybe we have forgotten to ask. Maybe that's it. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Even Jesus Christ wasn't doing it for his own reputation. He was doing it for the glory of God. So what do we see? What are we asking for in 2023? What do you see in 2023 for your life? What do I see in 2023? As I began to pray, and um, they had laid out all these um, weeks for January for vision, I really asked the Holy Spirit to download vision in me because I, I don't have to know the how. It, the how really doesn't matter to me because I know the who. And um, about 15, 16 years ago, we were still in the hotel. And I think they have this picture on the screen so it's, you can see it better. But in 2000, about 15 years ago, this property, this building hadn't even been built yet. And um, we were in the hotel, and I sat down at the computer after several days of praying and fasting. And I began to draw this with my, I'm not an architect, so just bear with that picture. And I began to draw out what I felt like God was dropping into my spirit. And I could literally see a building like this, but it was for youth. I could see the building, a sanctuary holding five to 700 people in an amphitheater so we could get, the, get it out into the airwaves, the word of God and the worship. And if there's ever a time where we need to get the word of God and worship into the airwaves, it's today. We've got to squash those voices that are coming in and saying, oh, you can be a boy if you're a girl, and you can be a girl if you're a boy. We've got to allow the Holy Spirit to move like only he can do because you and I can't fix it. It's way out of our control. Way out of our control. So I drew that, and then in 2014, we purchased this property Christmas of 2014. God opened the door and we moved in. But we can't stop there. We have to keep moving forward because God's given us a much greater picture for what he's doing. And so in Acts 1, I'm going back to the first church. And Acts 2.17 is the scripture that I really, was really honing in on. And the Holy Spirit said, you need to start in Acts 1 where they first assembled together because they got to know why they're assembling. And so, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. The waiting is the toughest part because we want God to do it now. And he's saying, if you'll wait on me, it's going to happen. And I can't imagine sitting in a room for 10 days, waiting in an upper room, waiting for God to pour out his spirit that he promised he would do. But that's what they did. They waited. But to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So he's leaving, but he's actually sending back the Holy Spirit. He's departing, but he's sending back the Spirit that is in him to us so that we can continue to do the works of the Father. Make sense? Okay. Can't do that works, can't do those works without the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But 
Here's the good part. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. Notice that he didn't say, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit so you can receive all this power and authority for you to use for your own good. He said, for you to be what? Witnesses. So what now he's putting a demand on us. He's saying, I'm going to fill you with the Holy Spirit, which is the power from on high. But I'm going to ask for something in return. I want you to be a witness of me. Easy enough. Easier said than done, right? Because what happens is the other little voices in the world start conjuring up in our heads and saying, well, what if they really don't want to hear about me being a witness? What if they really don't want to hear about Jesus Christ? He said, you shall be. He didn't say, you can be. He said, you shall. He said, you'll, will, you'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That means like Havasu City. I didn't mean that to come out like that. <laughs> right? Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, and also, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Are you gazing today? Have you caught yourself gazing? I mean, we've seen him heal. We've seen him deliver. We've seen him save. We've seen him come through with provision. But there are times when we catch ourselves gazing, like what just happened? He just left. Is he coming back? The, the disciples knew. He had told them many times over and over again, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to send the Spirit back to, come, to be your comfort so that you can be a witness. And then when it actually happened, it was like, oh my, he wasn't kidding. This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So now it's time for them to pray. God's going to give them a command. He's going to tell them what to do. You know, I am believing God for some pretty um, big things in 2023. And before the first service started, I could barely stand still because I had so much anxiety about voicing what I believe the Lord has shown me. And it's one thing to see something. It's another thing to declare it. You can say in your mind you're healed, but when you verbally declare it, you're going, oh, okay. I, I am catching a healing. That cancer is gone in Jesus' name. Right? To verbally declare it and say it in the face of the enemy is a totally different thing. Because we can think a lot of great things and have a lot of great ideas. But when you start verbalizing and sharing vision, because the Bible says, write it down, make it plain so that everybody can run with you. That's one of the reasons why we have the Discover Covenant class. Because we want to all be walking together like a choo-choo train, more or less. We're all in sync. Everything's going at the same time. We're all moving in the same direction. We're not going all different directions. Well, Discover Covenant class, if you haven't been to that, is a great way to say, way. Maybe they really do believe in the Bible. Now I know exactly what they believe. Now I know I believe the same thing. Now we're all on the same page. We all have the same vision. We're all going in the same direction. And that is so huge in moving a church forward, in moving anything forward, your own life forward. If you're married, your husband and wife, if you're going two different directions, your marriage is not going to make it. Right? We are the body of Christ, and we want the body of Christ to move forward and in, and in sync. So this message today is more or less a culmination of all the little messages that we've had through the month of January regarding vision and trust and faith. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath state journey. 
And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room. Where they were staying, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. They all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. You see, in order to be in one accord, we have to know where we're going. We have to believe together that we're all moving in the same direction, right? I'm going to say some things today and declare some things today that I believe are going to happen in 2023. To what magnitude? I don't know, but I think it's going to blow our socks off. I really do. I have been yearning and desiring for a move of God in this city, in our country, one like we haven't seen in this generation. It is the only thing that is going to change the direction of our city, of our schools, of our country. It is not the government. It is not whoever gets in as president. It's not our senators. It's not our Congress. But it is the people yielding and submitting to the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to move in them and through them that will make the changes that we need to have happen in our city and in our country. You can call me crazy. You can call me a zealot. You can tell me I'm foolish. They can say whatever they want. But when I hear from God, and I know that God is moving, and he's wanting to do something in me and through me, that's when I say, Rana, step aside. Decrease so that he can increase in you. That is how it's going to happen. You are going to be just a vessel where nobody can even see you, but they can see the Holy Spirit moving in you and through you. You are just the conduit for the Holy Spirit. So now I'm going to get to Acts 2, 1 through 17. And then we're going to declare 2023. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, you know, the day of Pentecost is, um, we celebrate it, we're celebrating it this year on May 28th, 2023. And I was here at the church yesterday and I... Pastor Joe called me, and he's preaching up in Flag, and Landon's preaching in California. He said, why aren't you home yet? I said, well, I'm getting ready to go, but I had to put something else in my notes um, about the day of Pentecost. <laughs> he goes, okay, well, go home. It's late, 5.30. So sitting here, and I'm thinking, May 28th, 2023, the Lord, that's really soon. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I should do any declaring right now. It's already February. It's already February. But in 2023, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I literally can feel him doing something so much greater than I could ever imagine. And he said, if you'll ask in my name, maybe we haven't been asking. Maybe that's the problem. We've just been expecting it, but we haven't been asking. So I said, okay, Lord, I'm asking you. You said you could do this. Now I'm asking you, do it. And I'll declare it. So the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all, again, here it is, in one accord. Well, it must be very important to be in one accord and in one place. And a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, suddenly. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. The whole house, not just the living room, 
not just the sanctuary, but it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled. Some filled? All filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together. All of Lake Havasu City came together. Can you imagine that? They all came. The, whole, the sound occurred. And the multitude came together. You know, the Holy Spirit got a really bad rap back in the 70s and 80s. They had this movement that they called the way. And I don't know if it's still around today. But as teenagers, we decided, let's go check this out because they're in the parks. They're, they're, you know, they're going from house to house. Let's see what this is all about. And so a bunch of us went to a meeting that they called the way. And it was in someone's home. And, and it, was, it was, took me back because as a little girl, I had received the Holy Spirit. But nobody had to teach me how to receive the Spirit because it was a gift from, the Holy, from our Heavenly Father. But in this meeting, they were teaching people how to um, speak in tongues and then they would shake their chin and shake their jaw and, you know, whatever, try to teach them and force it on them when there was no really Holy Spirit involved. It reminded me of the man in the book of Acts where he went to Jesus and said, what power are you doing this in? Can I buy that from you? Huh. And so now we're living in a society where we're like, oh, you know, yeah, we believe in the Holy Spirit, but that's not for us. It's just for them down the road. I want everything that God has for me that's in his word. And that includes the Holy Spirit. I want to be that disciple where he says, the, sa the works that you do, that I've been doing, you're going to do greater works than these. And without the Holy Spirit, we can't do that. Amen? Amen. So, let's keep going. They were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak um, Galileans? And now is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? We hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? But there were also those who were mocking are you ready for the mockers? Are you sure that's really real? Um, I think you're drunk. I think you're nuts. I think you are looped. Right? Mocking. And Peter says, no, it's not even 9 o'clock in the morning. There's nothing available <laughs> to, to even get drunk. It's only 9 a.m., He said, they're not drunk like you suppose, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. However, did he know what the prophet Joel said? Hundreds of years before he even was born, Joel prophesied that the Holy Spirit would be poured out. How would Peter even know that? Unless Jesus had shared it with them. Or maybe he had, uh, uh, he had heard about it in the temple when reading uh, um, the Old Testament. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men will dream dreams. I am calling that forth right now in this place. That our young men are going to see visions and our, old, and our older men and women are going to see dream dreams. We are going to call that into this house because I believe that there is vision within each and every one of us that wants us to grow the kingdom of God and win souls and see people healed and see people saved. 
Amen. Point number three, the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us. But without the Holy Spirit, we will be led by our own ambition and our own cravings. Oh, I have ambitions and I have, I dream dreams. I would love to have a, a sprinter or a super C class so I can go camping and see all my grandkids and drive all across the country or something like that. You know, I have my own ambitions and my own dream dreams. What I didn't tell you though, that they did in the book of Acts is they took everything they had after they were filled the whole the Bible says that all of them sold everything they had and put it together for the kingdom of God to give everybody what they needed I'm not declaring that in here but I did tell Pastor Joe if that's what it takes to see what we need to see here in Lake Havasu City sell it all I didn't have it when I came here and I don't need it when I leave because there's a much greater plan happening right now. Something much greater than you and I can imagine. And in the spirit, I'm ready to lay it all down. In the flesh, I'm ready to lay it all down. God, you can have it all. It's yours anyways. Without him, I wouldn't have it. So in 2023, I'm going to make some declarations I actually met with Larry McGraw. I don't know if he's here this morning. Um, Larry McGraw yesterday, and I said, I need this ramp taken out, and we need a portable ramp so we can stay in code. We need a baptismal tank over here because we need to be baptizing people on Sunday mornings, every Sunday morning, every service when they walk through that door. If we're going to see God move, we got to get prepared for it. <laughs> Amen. And he said, okay, we can do that. It's going to really mess things up. I said, well, then maybe we should wait till after Easter if we can't get it done before Easter. <laughs> I said, because I don't want it to be a mess in here. Um, but that's, that's what God is just downloading in my spirit, that we've got to, if we're, if we're really believing him for something great, then we better get prepared. We better get ready. Because the doors are going to open. And when that Holy Spirit starts moving and they start coming in off the street because the Holy Spirit is drawing them in here and bringing them through those doors, are you ready for them? Are you ready? So I declare in 2023 that we are going to see a day of Pentecost where we are all in one accord and hundreds, if not thousands. Now remember in the book of Acts, 3,000 were added to the church that day. When Peter stood up to preach, he said 3,000 souls were added to the church in one day. Greater things? Yeah. Oh, Pastor Ron, our city's only got 60,000 people in it. Are you sure? I'm calling a day of Pentecost here. I know that God is doing major things. And it, there's a major shift taking place right now. Day of Pentecost, let's get in one accord. Heavenly Father, right now I ask that every mind come into your presence. Father, all those minds that are wondering, hearts that are out there, Lord, bring us all into one accord in this place today. In the name of Jesus, so that we can move your kingdom forward. God's going to give us 25 new life groups are going to be birthed in 2023. Declare it. 50 new leaders equipped to grow the kingdom of God. Yes. Filled children's rooms with more than enough children's workers. Vibrant youth ministry reaching the teenagers of our city. Mission partners in Mexico, Botswana, and beyond. Provision for a full-time youth and children's pastor. Hundreds of water baptisms. Worship team expansion. Live stream expansion, packed house four times on Sunday. You ready? That's why we've got to have money in our building fund so we can start a new sanctuary. Amen? Which brings me to legacy. Legacy is not about you. It's not about me. It's about kingdom expansion. It's about leaving a better place for the next generation. It's the next generation. It's about outreach and missions. Are you ready to put your money where your mouth is? Yes. I am. I'm all in. 
I'm all in. $150,000 in our building fund just for in 2023. I believe we can break ground in 2025 for our new sanctuary. If we remain good stewards and we keep listening to the voice of God and seeing what he can do. Pay down debt. Make one and a half payments this year. Instead of just making our mortgage, let's make another half payment every month. That's happening. How do we get there, Pastor Rhonda? I'm so glad you asked. Let's see how it happened for the first church on the day of Pentecost. Peter said to them, repent. I think that's where we got to stop right now and say, God, I haven't been yielding to you in such a way that I have turned my back on everything in this world and I'm turning towards you and I'm all in. You see, repent is an about face. Repent is a total submission. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Oh, we don't have to, we get to. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That means it's for you, for the next generation and the generation beyond that. But we have got to leave a legacy of the reason why we're here today is because Peter stood up and preached. And because there were disciples making disciples. Are you a disciple of Christ? Are you a follower of Christ? Are you ready to make disciples? Are you ready to be that witness? And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word, gladly, were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued, even after God added 3,000, they continued steadfastly in the doctrine, fellowship, and breaking bread. So continually and daily with one accord again, now here they are back in one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. There they are. There's the life groups. Who got a football that said life, lead a life group? Anybody get a football that says lead a life group? Oh, good one, Judy. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. Anybody else? Life groups, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. You see, it's not all up to you and it's not all up to uh, me. It is about repenting and doing, being obedient to the word of God and then becoming a witness, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you in the game or are you watching the game? Are you in the bleachers or are you on the field? Big difference. Because in the bleachers, most likely you're not going to get scuffed up. In the bleachers, it requires no action, just cheering. Are you a fan or are you in the game? Big difference. Would you stand with me? You know, we do a lot of little things to um, try to appreciate people and thank them for service in March 25th. We're going to have our Cove Volunteer Awards here. 
occasionally we'll take people to lunch or dinner and thank them. But really it's not about, you're not doing it for me or Pastor Joe when you're in the game. And I love all your game shirts, those of you that wore game shirts. I just wore one that said team. I know it's hard to read, but that really does say team. My husband bought me a, a Brady shirt. I'm not going to wear Tom Brady's shirt to church. I don't, he's okay. But he's, I'm not a fan of him. Anyway, I mean, I like him. He's all right. Don't get me wrong. But I am in the game of building the kingdom of God. I am in that game. If you'll bow your heads with me right now and close your eyes, maybe that's you today and you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've been sitting in the bleachers and watching the game and saying, boy, it feels mighty nice coming here, just sitting back and relaxing and enjoying the worship and enjoying the word. But now it's time for you to get in the game. It's time for you to make a difference. It's time for you to start walking out your calling, walking out the purpose for which God has called you. And maybe you don't know where to begin. If that's you today, I want you to raise your hand because I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you so full that you'll have clear direction. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for those hands. Yes. Heavenly Father, right now, I ask that you touch every man and woman in this place. Lord, not just touch us, because we've been touched by you before, and we went out and didn't make any changes. But Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Breath of God, breathe on us life. Life that will cause us to change and and move forward and get in the game and not just be bystanders and fans. For no matter how old or how young we are, Lord, you've called us and we still have purpose in our life. Purpose in your kingdom. Mentoring marriages. Praying for the sick. Leading a life group. Greeting. Father, whatever it is you want of me, I empty myself today of me. Fill me with you. Lord, let you increase and us decrease. May the Holy Spirit fill this room, fill our hearts. In Jesus' name, breath of God, breathe on them. Fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit. Is that your prayer today? You are welcome. Holy Spirit, I welcome you into my heart today. Fill the atmosphere. Father, you know that we're living in a perverse generation. But God... Your Holy Spirit can fill this place, fill our city, our schools. Let your presence be felt. Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here Holy Spirit you are welcome here not just in these four walls that we call church Lord